back on Sports Sunday with a little holiday weekend treat for you. Uh, a different perspective from an aircraft that is so familiar to so many, but you've never seen it quite like this before. Edward Egras here with uh, fresh off a ride on the Goodyear Blimp. Ed, you made it. Congratulations. Thank Th thank you so much, Deuce. The Blimp had a busy week flying over the Cowboys' last preseason game, the SMU-Baylor game, and a lot of college football action from Saturday. It's a quieter day in sports today, so this morning I took a ride in the Blimp, and it was something I won't soon forget. 192 feet long and 60 feet high, the Goodyear Blimp may look small in the sky, but it's enormous from the ground. It weighs 13,000 pounds, but when pumped with helium to make it fly, it's only 100 to 200 pounds. Passengers ride in a gondola that's no bigger than a mid-sized car. Once boarded, the crew does one more pass through, then we're up in the air. If you've ever gone sailing, the feeling is similar to the wind carrying you and trying to go against the current to your destination. The windows are open here, but I've been instructed not to spit. You say you've been flying once for 15 years? 15 years. 15 years been flying. Matthew St. John is our pilot and has flown over some major events, including a Super Bowl and things outside of sports. Well, the Rose Parade's always fun on, on the January, on the New Year's Day. Oh, that's always a big, well, you feel like you're part of your excitement. You know, everybody sure. in the nation's watching that. It's almost like a modern-day explorer where you're seeing things in a, in a, from a unique vantage point that most people don't get a chance. Our journey includes flying over Globe Life Park and AT&T Stadium. The blimp provides overlooks you can't get any other way. Unless it's really windy, like if it's a day like today, you'll see us doing orbits around the stadium just to maintain control. The hazy conditions mean we don't have the best views of the Dallas skyline, but the water and trees below are still breathtaking. 350, 4,000 feet, we'll go southwest 4374. The Goodyear blimp has had no major disasters. In fact, St. John said his most dangerous moments on the job haven't involved being in the air. Safety is our primary concern. If, if, if I'm telling you... We should probably keep it on mass for the day. Sometimes people just don't understand that, you know. Like, and you'll get you know, every now and then somebody get pretty worked up about it. Sure. <laughs> so in other words, the more dangerous moments of the of the job involve <laughs> when you're on the ground, yeah, which is good. <laughs> After more than an hour traveling at roughly 35 miles per hour. So we're going to land here soon. Everybody just stay seated. 14 people are needed to wrangle the blimp as we try to land. Be really careful. If you're going too fast, the crew will not grab you. They'll tell you to go around and do it again. If you come in too slow, you might get a wind shift and it'll take you off course. And the crew might wave you off and tell you to do it again. So it's, it's an excellent school for patience. St. John is a pro, needing only one attempt to land safely. The ground feels nice again, but I hope my next blimp ride is soon. A good year is retiring the blimp, but not airships. A new version will be above your favorite sporting events, though technically it's not a blimp because there's a fixed structure inside. Now, another way technology is caught up to the blimp is with digital lights showing words across the side. Now, I asked if during my ride if it could read Edward Egros is the greatest sportscaster in the world, but they declined. Deuce. They would have allowed second best, I think, Ed. Uh, th thanks very much. Uh, good stuff there with the Goodyear blimp. Appreciate it.